Lots of doctors ask me how uh, I make my matrices for popping smile. For example, when we do a digital smile design and then we print the model. So I do several things basically. It's a three step process. One, once we have the printed model, I glaze that with uh, up to uh, glaze from GC. So it has sealed all the porosity on the model. You see, that's why it's so shiny. Everybody has different tricks. This is my trick and it works great. The other thing is I use a material that is compatible light body with hard body. So for example, I use, this is one of the products I use as a Zermac Elite HD Plus light body fast set. So this is a really good, you can do a slow set, but fast set is good. Um, and what I also do, I use, I don't use those skinny little heads when the material comes out because it sometimes traps bubbles. I use the thick one. Or if you have those small ones, just take this off and just use this opening because what happens is if you have small opening, you're gonna create like lots of bubbles. So then I use the hard body. It's a potty basically concept, which is a normal set. There's a base and catalyst. So I mix half and half and I create like a little sausage and then do it. So, but I do it in two steps. Two steps means I do the light body first, let it set. And once it sets, I do the hard body on top of that. Once that's set, then I'll open it up and then I'll create cuts and I'll show you all the steps, okay? So let's get started. Make sure you have enough material for this. And this one was 10 unit wax up, so I do a little bit extra, so I have more to cut. And watch this, I take that big opening and kind of squirt. Just like that, see that? So it, all the details are in. And make sure that you go beyond the sulcus, the margin. This is the same way that we duplicate the conversions for hybrids, for example. We use the same material, light body, hard body, in the retainer box. If you saw this video, it's good if you do hybrids. So you see, I go over the margin, then I go occlusally, again with the opening. If it's more than you need, that's fine. It's better to have more than less and just go make sure we capture all the detail, okay? Go on the lingual, because those are crowns, make sure that's detailed. And for the palette, I normally capture the palette so there is a rest position. This one is only 10 units, so it's no problem because the adjacent teeth will hold it down, doesn't slide around, but Cases when you do full arches, what I do is I normally capture the palette so it doesn't slide around, so the doctor can position it right. Okay, so so I know there's no bubbles now, and it's all covered and thick enough to capture the detail of the wax up. Okay. This is the first step. So we'll let it set. So this one is, the light body is set, you can see. It's not tacky and uh, I don't peel it off. I keep it on until I do the hard body and then it sets together. The reason it's important to have a material that compatible with each other is that they don't peel from each other. So I've seen many people who use two different products that they are not compatible and the light body peels off from it. So typically one scoop is enough, but to be safe side, you can always add a little bit extra. Make sure it's about half and half. There we go. Let's move this over here. And make sure you mix it really well so you don't have striation. This is a normal set. You can see that it's normal set. Don't use fat sets because sometimes you're not fast enough to do it and then it sets on you. So I use my thumb, kind of massage it really good. And then... And make sure you don't have many striations in between them so you don't have voids. Now make like a little sausage like this, see? And then go around in sizzle edge. Position just like that, and then massage it down. 
massage it down to the lingual. Same with my thumb, and then same thing on the buckle. Just you got enough time, so don't rush it. That's why a normal set is good. If it's more, it's better because then you have to cut it off. Go for the light body so it covers. See, massage it down all. And then I use um, my hand to kind of tap it, make sure it's kind of massaged nicely. And then I put it on a flat surface like this. And then massage it in. So that way you have a nice flat surface on the occlusal area. Okay. I don't normally put anything in the pressure cooker, like some people use silicone index, they put in pressure cooker, this is too complicated, this is simple. Anybody can do it, you can do it, assistants can do it, technicians, anybody who can uh, do this um, pop and smile preparation for, before the patient comes. Okay, so now this is set, you can see that's very set, so don't do it prematurely, don't open it because it's gonna distort it. Just use a little finger, kind of poke it in. Lift that one side up. There we go. And once one comes out, and do the other side. See, it's lifting up, lifting up, pretty good. You see how nice and clean it is? Very nice detail. So now it captures exactly what I did in the wax up, no bubbles, there's no bubbles. Anyway, so to cut this now, use a blade that actually has enough straight, uh, like a scalpel knife that is, I think it's number 25, because if you take a small one, it will be hard for you to cut it and kind of shape it, in my opinion, and you can also hurt yourself. So I like to use the long, long scalpels, number 25, and use a fresh blade, new ones, because it cuts easier, smoother, faster, and doesn't um, create a ragged kind of cuts. So always use a new one. All right. And then you just watch where's the cervical area and I'll, I cut straight line first and then I'll do that little um, CJ exposure. So I'll just go like that. Can you see that? I'm watching inside so I don't cut too much. All the way straight so I worry about straight for now okay and then I cut I keep enough uh, palate here for support especially when you have no teeth left but this one is only 10 units so it should be fine with the neighboring teeth to support it so I'll cut this one straight as well now I know we're doing like 10 units so I'll keep one extra tooth here maybe the whole tooth or half of it so I have index so it stays stable when you try it in like that Just like that, okay? Now, what else I'm gonna do is, you see the, the papilla area? So I'm gonna cut and sculpt this each tooth individually. So when the laxatamp or material, the acrylic will flow out, you can cut off the proximal areas easily. Okay? Just like that, with like a little V. That's why it's so crucial to have a very fresh knife and long enough. So you can watch what you're doing, see? Just like that. Very simple. I keep enough uh, excess just in case the doctor wants to cut more, he can do it himself, but I just get close enough and then some doctors like it closer, some don't. I like it a little bit longer like that because when you push it in, the material actually creates a nice indentation and shape. Now, once you have that, you see, it's, it doesn't touch the CJ, but it's almost there. I got enough V's here. You can always do add more. Now, this is a little bit bulky, so I'm looking at the shapes and see I got enough room here. 
put it back on the model watch the midline see the central midline here I'll we'll pop it in see it's very nice and solid so now I'm cutting off the excess so first cut is this way towards the cervical this angle not this way I'm doing this way so it's thin down like that so when it goes inside the mouth the lip can go over it without being too bulky again important to have a fresh knife so it cuts faster easier smoother that's one cut then i'm looking at this and then i say this one is too thick as well i got plenty of room so i'll go straight line here just like that okay if you need to thin down more and you see that there is enough thickness then just go ahead and do it it's better to do little by little than too much at once see it's nice smooth Let's see if there's anything else maybe here a little bit you can always cut more when you send it to the doctor now what else I'll do, I, you see the midline is here, like where the center is. I'll create a like, little indication here for the doctor to know when he fills up the acrylic where the center is. And do this reference point. So now we know where the midline is. See, that helps the doctor to slide it in in the right place because you don't want to be in the wrong position. Now, if you see that this, this one is too thick, you can thin it down a little bit here. You don't want to thin down too much because then it's too flexible. It. and then I see here I can cut a little bit more so we got plane number one here towards the cervical then the flat surface and then another angle one so it's thinner that's it and that's what we sent so first step light body let it set second step hard body then cut and cut more if you need to and uh, when you get it in the mouth you try this first make sure it fits nicely and easily so you know the indication where it sits and then you fill it up with loxetam put it back in you have the right pressure for the palate you can push it in so it doesn't bounce and then you got a very nice popping smile this is one way that we do popping smile which is directly with the silicone i hope that helps